All right, Mocha Don is right, is here with you. And today we're going to talk about inflation. Inflation is not when the price of one or two things is going up or down. Inflation is when the price of everything is going up. It's uh, a systemic issue, which is different than food prices going up and down or oil prices going up and down. And it is, in fact, uh, caused by money. Money causes inflation. We have some evidence of that. If we just take a quick look at the St. Louis Fed. And there is the St. Louis Fed's chart on the money supply. And as you see, this chart goes back. Well, at the moment, I got it set to go back to about 2007. And you can see the money supply going up. And here it is going up during the Great Recession. Nothing amazing happening here. Just going up a little too fast, but <laughs> that's the way they've been. And here is February of 2020. And look at this hockey stick graph. Where is Greta? Greta should be going. That you're telling us we should be ashamed because this is money being printed and thrown out by helicopter for the people. From uh, February of 2020 to about, uh, see, look at February of 2022. The money supply increased by, let's see, it increased by over 39%, almost 40%. So in two short years, they increased your money supply 40% by throwing money out of helicopters at everybody, a lot of people who didn't deserve it, a lot of people who didn't need it, who saved it. This was a bad idea. They figured out when they got hit with this inflation in 22, they figured it out. And um, from about uh, July of 2022 to about... Um, April of 2023, they pulled a trillion dollars back out of the money supply. They do that by selling treasuries and then destroying the money. Uh, the Federal Reserve sells treasuries, takes the money they get paid, and they destroy the money. They are the god of money. They are the creator of money. And so they uh, can also destroy money. When they need more money, they'll just create it out of whole cloth like they did here when they uh, <clears throat> bought those treasury bonds with money that they printed or magically made up electronically. Well, we can take a look at the consumer price index. This is sort of the core CPI. It's without food and energy prices. So it kind of shows you the true rate of inflation. This goes back to uh, 2014 here. And you see inflation humming along. And you see when we have the recession in 2020, inflation slows down. That's called disinflation. Uh, there's less inflation. In fact, all the way down here, this is when you should have refinanced your mortgage around February, January, February 2021, when inflation was only at 1.4%. But then, you know, they had thrown all that money into the economy, and it takes a little while for that money to get there. And so, zoom here, where's, where's Greta to show us this hockey stick graph? This is inflation zooming up from 1.4% to 6.538% in December of 2022. And of course, there's all this you know, clawing back of a trillion dollars by destroying the money you're paid for your bonds that the Fed did, the interest rate hikes the Fed did, and they have pulled the inflation rate all the way down in December 23 to 4.55%, but never fear. It did go up a bit. January of 24, it was at 4.60%. What I'm trying to tell you folks is that the inflation thing is not over. We are still going to have more inflation. The inflation is, means that the Fed is not going to cut rates. The way that the Fed is going to cure the problem with interest rates and cure the problem with inflation to be blunt, is by having a recession. Recessions are the cure for inflation, and we're going to have a recession. I know, you don't like recessions. Recessions are bad things, but they're not that bad. They're not that bad, and they cure the inflation. Trust me, they cure the inflation, but they do cure the inflation and they're not usually particularly dangerous. But look at, the, look at the bright side. If the economy collapses, you'll get more helicopter money. No, it's a bad thing. Helicopter money is bad. It causes inflation. 
I know people love being given money for nothing. Money for nothing is wonderful. It's a no pain situation. But but if you have no pain, there is no gain in anything in life. The money for nothing results in inflation. The inflation claws back all of that money, every single bit of it. Milton Friedman's Nobel laureate uh, in economics, this is nothing new. This was being talked about 40 to 50 years ago. The first step toward understanding the cause of inflation is to recognize that it is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. It's always and everywhere a result of too much money, of a more rapid increase in the quantity of money than an output. Yeah, so what he's saying there is you can increase the amount of money by about the same rate as the growth in GDP. The Fed has set a 2% inflation target. They're in the fours now. In all honesty, you're not going to see any significant reduction in inflation. It's probably sticky enough. It's going to come back. They're not going to cut rates. They're probably going to hike again, and they're going to cause a recession. Who's doing this to us, Milton? The important next step is to recognize that today governments control the quantity of money so that as a result, inflation in the United States is made in Washington and nowhere else. That's right. Inflation is made in Washington, D.C. It's, um, it's actually not made by the Federal Reserve Board. They're just reacting to Congress spending too much money. Congress needs to stop spending money. We're going to do a video in the future about what exactly it is that Congress spends money on. But Congress needs to stop spending money. When the Federal Reserve Board prints money, it's because it has to. It's not because it wants to. They understand these things. <clears throat> Government, Congress, the House of Representatives, the Senate, even the Federal Reserve Board, and especially President Joe Biden, they don't step up and take responsibility at all. Of course. No government, any more than any one of us, likes to take responsibility for bad things. We're all of us human. If something bad happens, it wasn't our fault. And the government is the same way. So it doesn't accept responsibility for inflation. If you listen to people in Washington talk, they will tell you that inflation is produced by greedy businessmen. Yeah, they will do that. In fact, didn't I just hear Joe Biden come out and say that inflation is caused by greedy corporations increasing their profits? And this is bull. It's BS. It's not greedy corporations. In the 70s, they said it was the OPEC nations. Uh, in the 80s and 90s, they tried to blame the labor unions I mean, they blame everybody. Or it's produced by grasping unions. Or it's produced by spendthrift consumers. Or maybe it's those terrible Arab sheiks who are producing it. Now, of course, businessmen are greedy. Who of us isn't? Trade unions are grasping. Who of us isn't? And there's no doubt that the consumer is a spendthrift. Yeah, it's your fault. Um, but I don't think that you're the ones that are causing the inflation, and neither does Milton Friedman. But none of them produce inflation. Love the hairdos back in the For 70s. For the very simple reason that neither the businessman, nor the trade union, nor the housewife has a printing press in their basement on which they can turn out those green pieces of paper we call money. Only Washington has that printing press and therefore, only Washington can produce inflation. Right. That's exactly right. So we're done with the argument. Washington produces inflation. They do it by having the Federal Reserve Board print more money than we need. The Federal Reserve Board is forced to do that because Congress can't seem to stick to a budget. If, if you were $34 trillion in debt, you would probably stick to a budget, wouldn't you? I would hope so. Just thank God that we control our own families. We control our own family budgets. My wife agrees with me. At least every man knows that about his wife. 
And apparently Milton Friedman does too. So this is not a new problem. This is a problem that's existed for a long time. It's not going to change. We're going to have a recession. We always are going to have a recession. That should fix the problem. It's not going to be the end of the world, but you're the one who's paying for that helicopter money. This is you paying the price for that helicopter money. The government's not going to pay the price. You pay the price. So what should you do with your money? Well, I think we're going to have a recession, and that'll probably result in the stock market declining. There's a lot of people that agree with me. There are some people who don't. I think the best thing to do right now is to have your money in a very secure place. Uh, go open an account at a Wells Fargo or a Bank of America or a Chase or a U.S. Bank and open a, open a brokerage account that is self-directed. There shouldn't be any fees. You can buy floating rate treasury ETFs. Floating rate treasury ETFs are great. They're short term. Um, there's no credit risk because it's the United States government that, as we know, prints the money. Uh, there's limited systemic risk. If it if it drops, it's only a few percent and it's only for a month or something until fi people figure out they shouldn't have sold their treasury. Usually they're yielding 5.3 or 5.4% on an annual basis. They pay their interest monthly and they tend to, um, they just tend to be very safe vehicles for you to put your money into right now. I am not your financial advisor. I am a financial advisor. I am not your financial advisor. If you have any money at all, you should probably get advice from a financial professional. Uh, the interest that's paid on U.S. Treasuries is frequently not taxed by your state. You need to get advice from a CPA in your state. Uh, I live in Nevada, so I have no state income taxes. Move to Nevada, but don't vote like a Democrat here. We're going to have another video uh, coming up on how the government is trying to take your liberty away. By the way... This is nothing new either. This has been going on for 40, 50, 60 years. It's nothing new. In fact, at the end of the Vietnam War, there were people talking to Milton Friedman about it. I see society as more and more tending toward the us usurping of my individual <laughs> rights and freedoms as time goes yeah. by. Um, what do you see as the ultimate end of this, i.e. either in democracy or socialism, and why do you think the individuals within the society are letting this happen to them? Well, the last part of your question is the hardest one to answer. If we continue along the road we've been going on, of usurping more and more power to governmental officials to control our lives, I see only one end. And that's a loss of anything that has any meaning as democracy, a loss of human freedom, and a prison state. Prison state. That's the end. Now, why are people letting them see this happen to them? That's a, much more difficult, that's a much more difficult question to answer. And I think it is m largely because of ignorance, ignorance about where they are going. That's right. Um, and hopefully we've worked a little bit today, uh, done something to make you a little bit less ignorant. <laughs> um, we're all a little ignorant about something, and I'm hoping that I've given you some information. I'm hoping that if you're interested in learning more about economics or hearing some more wise words from Milton Friedman, you go to the Free to Choose Network or the uh, Free to Choose YouTube channel. They have a great channel there. I highly recommend that if you're interested in more detail. Otherwise, be careful with your money. The government's trying to screw you out of it. Don't let them do it. God bless. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Thank you so much for seeing me today.